Who um who hit the rock in this one last year, Brad? Me, <laughs> you all got the rock problem. Yeah, I was just in the wrong bit of gear. <laughs> yeah, you needed a rock. You me? needed a rock crusher. Yeah, well, it right. did crush the rocks. To be fair, <laughs> just did a bit of damage on the way through. <laughs> Good morning guys, it's Matt here. Welcome to the channel. Um, we've got a bit going on today. Um, it's going to be a little bit of an interrupted week. We've actually got a field day tomorrow that most of us will be going to. And yeah, so we're just trying to get a few of the bigger jobs done or big steps, big parts of jobs. I don't even know what I'm saying. So I've got header number two here. It is having the rotors taken out. So hoping today we can get them out. We've actually done it a few times, so we should be getting quicker and quicker at it. So this is the one um, before last year. Um, we went right through it and there was a heap of panels worn out in it um, from when we bought it, which we knew. But we had pulled all the rotors out and replaced all the panels, fixed everything up, um, spent a bit of time in that. And then actually, we actually, um, a rock went through it um, not that long into harvest last year. So. Um, we're not quite sure. We've never really had issues with rocks going through machines because um, they've got the, the sensor plate here which detects any rocks and it just drops the, the stone trap. Um, but we're not sure whether just one got caught in such a way that it didn't pick it up or something happened or whether the mechanism actually wouldn't let go. We generally, um, before like part of the pre-season check over, we um, test the trap door. Um, you just get a spanner and knock it on the front there and watch for the trap door to, to um, come down so we're just not 100 percent sure what was going on with that but um, that's what's got to happen so the other thing we've got going on here is the challenger here we've got new drive wheels going on because we were having some issues particularly in the wet um, like when we were sewing and that where it would actually slip on this so it just relies on the tension of the tracks and the friction on this bit of rubber and on that under there so it, uh, sometimes they get a bit glazed up and you can see there is some chunks taken out so we're putting new ones of them on and um, yeah to do that obviously we've got to pull the tracks off so that's what you're doing today eh Phil? Yeah that's the plan so we're sending them up to Big Tire in Toowoomba oh yeah to get re redone so they just rebuilt put new rubber on those hubs so yeah for the Problem is you've got to take the whole the outside one's easy to take off. <laughs> the inside one not so much. Yeah, you gotta still because they're two halves. Yeah. And they're about eighteen hundred dollars to uh, get them redone each. Whereas if you go and buy new ones they've at least double that. Yeah, right. Oh, so, it should but be. it's gonna the only catch is it's gonna take a month to get them done, so it means we're this is sitting in the shed with stands on it for a month. Well, that's yeah. not unusual for us, though. No, usually no, something, true. something. there's two or three things sitting in the shed for months, usually. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I said in the last video that there was something arriving and it has arrived. So this here, we've got the Can-Am Defender. Um, it is for the development block. So the development block is quite 
uh, hilly, rocky, just hard, and, and we've actually, it's, it's very hard on just uh, vehicles, so we wanted to get something that was tough enough to and reliable enough that you could go over in some pretty wild areas safely. This is, um, yeah, this is it. So I got a few extras, got the doors, um, and just got some good canvas seat covers. Um, so yeah, this is just the petrol one with, um, I think it's about 82 horsepower. And yeah, it it's, uh, goes pretty quick. We've got the windscreen. That's all glass, so you can lift that right up if you want. And got the little nudge bar on the front. Got some little side steps. Got some guards for under here, um, just so you don't get rocks and different things flicking up and damaging all the plastic there. So there's a winch at the front, which I probably never use, but it's nice to have it there if we do need it. And um, and obviously we've got the tilt tray um, here, so you can um, yeah you can if you get a load of sticks or you're out stick picking, you can just come to a pile and dump them. So that makes that a lot easier. So that's that. So I'm doing a little bit of editing trickery. This is actually a few days after in, of this section in the video, but I lost a heap of footage that I took at a Can-Am. Um, so the video wasn't gonna make sense at all. So I've come back to fill in the gaps. Brad and I thought it was a bit boring just pulling the feeder house off the header. So we decided to bling this out a little bit and um, I'll show you what we did. So we needed a UHF. So I got that mounted up there. Yeah, we got the waterproof radio in here, the GME um, TX4610. So bought that, put that in there, and we've just got a little aerial around the side. You don't want anything too big because it just gets wiped out. But what we also did is next to the aerial mount, we've got an Anderson plug um, socket. So I don't know what they might be called overseas, but it's just a 50 amp electrical socket you can use. So it just, it's good for sort of heavier draw appliances and things or pumps or whatever it is. So we can have a little, either a firefighting unit here, a diesel pump or anything, just a spray pack. Um, we can have in here and just come along, plug that in there. And all the wiring for that goes down to the battery, all down through the, the side here and I've got it wired to ignition so you don't actually accidentally leave something on and have a flat battery so I've got the fuse uh, holder there um, relay there and obviously just connected direct to battery so that is all we did basically but looking forward to be able to put it to work and the other thing going on is still dealing with these so what we're actually doing is not only are we Take, sending these things away um, to get the new rubber put on them. These rams here, which is what gives the belts their tension, we're going to send them both away to get resealed. Um, yeah, just to make sure. And yeah, so I've already pulled that one off this side. So yeah, they all look a bit. It's a little bit smaller than what we're used to with the track frames um, since working on the D11s. We're not going to be back here for couple of days so it's good to tidy off a few of those jobs. Oh no, well we're back here after our little uh, excursion to the field day. Um, it's the one of the biggest ones in the southern hemisphere or if not the biggest one I think. Um, Agquip so we were there. I didn't take any footage because we we're just enjoying ourselves but yeah it's good to see a few people there. Um, we are back all into it here. We've got about to send dad off on an adventure. So he's going to take them up and they're getting sent away to get redone. So the rubber's going to get redone on them. And yeah, he's going to pick up some oil. What else are you going to do? I'll try Make a, a coffee somewhere. <laughs> or two. You're going to be find some mischief to get into. I thought I saw you down at Eggquip yesterday. Thought you saw me. Hey. <laughs> that was good. We saw a few people come up and said g'day to us. And uh, yeah, it's a bit weird because... Yeah, we, we're, not used we're, to we're, not, we're not used to people really wanting to talk to us. <laughs> well, we think we're a bit strange, yeah. don't we? But no, it was good to see. And um, yeah, was, a few people commented too, saying that they would like to, um, would have come up to us, but 
just wanted to leave us and let us enjoy the day, so that's good too. But no, we, we appreciated the people to saying a quick um, good job and a bit of encouragement. That was good. It is. Yeah. So we've got... Dad hasn't broken the back window here again, if you're wondering. We well, did last time. Yeah, he did, that. he did that a little while ago, but this is preventative, um, hopefully. So we've got the stone guard on the trailer as well, but still, I mean, it only takes one rock to hit in the right spot. And it's could, all over, but... I could just slow down, couldn't I? All that. That's not your style, is it? No, it's still about my driving style. <laughs> okay. Alright, so you'll be gone most of the day, eh? I reckon. Yeah. No. Nah. Hello. Um, surprise, surprise, Phil's on the phone again. Brad's working away. Hello. He's, yeah. uh... You're not, not as cheeky today, are you? No. Got too much work. A bit, bit sore from the day out. Yeah, a bit of walking was involved yesterday, so we're all a little bit ginger. Give me exercise. <laughs> yeah. So we do have the feeder house out off the header, obviously. Um, now, we hopefully we'll be pulling the rotors out today as well. Um, does this look all right, you reckon? Yeah, we're pulling the rotors out when it gets off that camera. Yeah. I'm getting a bit of slack from... Um, but we, we can all stick it up to Brad. <laughs> just changing the eye in the bushes here. And but other than that, it's all pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just going to make up some new sprockets for that. Yeah, right, eh? But no, it does need the rebuild like the other one did, does it? No, nah, nah. did that last year. Yeah, so. yeah. And the, the rock didn't damage it. Who, um, who hit the rock in this one last year, Brad? Who was that? <laughs> <laughs> You've got the rock problem. Yeah, just in the wrong bit of gear. <laughs> yeah, you needed a rock. You needed a rock crusher. Yeah, well, it did crush the rocks. To be fair, <laughs> just did a bit of damage on the way through. <laughs> so we do have Josiah here. He's working away while I'm bludgeoning on the camera. So it's um, yeah, we should be getting pretty good at this, really. Hey, Josiah. Yes. Because <laughs> we had this all out last year and basically did what we're doing now, but we need a, um, I don't know how we stop rocks from going through there. Do we just need to replace the driver? Is that right, Brad? Yeah. Just replace the driver? Yeah, I'm going on holidays. <laughs> Righto, well, we'll, uh, we'll get into it, I think. Well, Josiah and I got this rotor out fairly fairly easily. Um, it is a lot easier getting them out, that is for sure, than putting them back in, but still we're, we're slowly getting better and better at them. Just about to pull the other one out, but you can see the damage here. Big dent there. It mutilated this a bit. It's got a crack, crack over here and dinged it there, so... Yeah, there was a quick running repair we had to do because this was all folded right over. Um, I think I might put a link to the video if I can find it, whichever vlog number it was. Um, but yeah, I'll put that in the top corner there if you're interested in actually when this happened. The problem is with this is it's very tricky to get them balanced again and she's all just, yeah, it's all a bit crinkled and creased. You can see all these dints down here. Um, so yeah, it's just not, not worth... Not worth the effort to try to repair that. That's what we were told anyway. Um, but in here you can see the top hats, which we just put brand new um, stainless steel ones in of these actually, before it happened. And probably because they were stainless steel is the reason why it didn't punch a hole right through it. Because, um, yeah, just stainless steel's got a bit better, is a little bit stronger or more, more 
um, able to absorb an impact than just normal metal. So that's probably, if it, that was just a standard top hat, it probably would have punched a hole and that, that would have been a lot more tricky to um, try and continue harvesting. But yeah, you can see there, big gouge in there. And um, yeah, there's a few dints around the side. We're just not sure whether, um, we, we think it's damaged the other rotor um, because it all sort of happened at the front here. And um, yeah, it could have bit a bit of a rock or something easily can go into the other one um, if it's shattered like early on. What we've found on this side is you might just be able to see um, there there's a big dint on that now these pins here are meant to be there's meant to be one in that um, because uh, on every, all the others it's the with a pair it's the back ones they're in so that one there is missing now what we would assume has happened is a bit of a rocks come in hit that which has busted the thread in here or or warped it enough that it's become loose and um, and obviously when you, this is like the spinning fast and everything's moving through here it could have easily unwound then that thing there's gone through the header and I don't think it's it itself hasn't seemed to have done a lot of damage other than we were really really puzzled why we had one chopper blade missing um, I don't think we can see the one that we're missing but anyway one of these blades here um, was missing Brad's actually gone to town to pick up some pieces and he's gonna bring back the rotors hopefully so there's just a couple of panels needing to be replaced and then the new rotors will go in pretty much so that's it's not gonna be a as big a job as probably we feared um, the biggest issue will be that top hat um, it's a little fiddly, you've got to get down inside and yeah, it's it's not the most pleasant job but it's doable, we've, we've done a few of them before. Brad's back. So we pretty much got most of the bits and pieces we needed. Um, that's there and pretty heavy. So we've got the bits of metal we need and all the extra bits for the rotor. So it's looking good. We have got pretty much all we can do done. Um, we just waiting on a couple of bits so that um, top plate was the wrong one so they have to, the other one actually has to be ordered so it'll be a day or so um, might come tomorrow we're not sure I don't think it will though so uh, it'll have to sit here for the minute so anyway guys just make sure to hit the like button if you enjoy the videos um, and we'll catch you in the next one